Hello students, today I am going to teach you one of the most important topic in tissues chapter that is plant tissues. Now before going into detail of plant tissues, let us understand what a tissue is. So tissue is nothing but a group of cells that have similar structure and that function together as a unit and they are organized together to perform a specific task. Now when we say about an example of tissue, yes blood is an example of a tissue that is made up of blood cells and platelets. Another examples if we want to take then that is skin. Skin is a, is a uh, tissue that is made up of three different layers that is epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. Then bone. Bone is also a living tissue that makes up the bo body's skeleton. So do you know what the study of tissues called? It is histology. Okay. So are plants and animals made of same types of tissues? No, right? So there are some differences. First difference is plants tend to grow throughout the life but animals just grow up into a certain period. Now plants do not show locomotion. Now what is locomotion? Locomotion is the ability to move but animals move from one place to another place but we can't see in the case of plants. So they do not show locomotion. Now the third difference is plant tissues have cell walls made of cellulose while animal tissues have membrane that is made up of protein. So these are some of the uh, difference between plant tissues and animal tissues. Is there any similarity between plant and animal tissues? Yes, there is. So we will look on one by one. The first similarity is both plant and animal cells are eukaryotic. Now what is eukaryotic? Eukaryotes are the one which have nucleus. Now basically cells are divided into two eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cell. Eukaryotes are those which have a true nucleus but prokaryotes are those which doesn't have any true nucleus. Understood? Now the second Similarity is they have a membrane bound nucleus that contains the genetic material. Third, nucleus, cell membrane, cytoplasm and mitochondria are the four cell components that are found in both animal and plant cells. So these are certain similarity between plant and animal cells. Now plant tissues are basically categorized into two types meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. Now when we subdivide the meristematic tissues they are again subdivided into three types that is apical meristem, lateral meristem and intercalary meristem and when we talk about the permanent tissues these are divided into simple and complex. Now what is simple? Simple tissues are composed of single type of cell and whereas Complex tissues are composed of more than one type of cells. Now these simple tissues are again classified into three major types that is parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma. Whereas complex are divided into two that is xylem and phloem. So these are the major categories of plant tissues. I hope this much is clear to you. Uh, so first we will take up the meristematic tissues. Now what is a meristematic tissue? They are undifferentiated cells that are responsible for the secondary growth in plants that helps in cell division and as I said earlier there are three parts apical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. What is apical meristem? Like as you can see over here that apical meristem is present at the tip, right? So they are responsible for the, the growth of plants. So they are located at the tip of the root and the stem. So it is responsible for the height of plants. 
and it allows the plants to grow vertically the growth is always in vertical position both above the ground or below the ground now next is intercalary meristem so inter means what it's between so it is found at the inter nodes or the stem regions between the places where the leaves attach now it is basically seen in monocot monocot plants now what is monocot monocot means the one which have a single cotyledon right like for example rice right rice has a single cotyledon wheat has a single cotyledon right so these are the examples of monocot plants so intercalary meristem they are found at the internodes understood and it increases the length between the internodal region so this is internodal region the nodes and internodes right so basically they are responsible for the uh, the length between the nodal region now next is lateral meristem lateral meristem it increases the girth and thickness of the plant now uh, this one girth right girth means the thickness of the plant or the stem this much you understood meristematic tissues they are classified into apical meristem intercalary meristem and lateral meristem apical meristem it is responsible for the growth of plants intercalary meristem they are found in the internodes region then lateral meristem it increases the girth of the plant or the thickness of the plant what are the characteristic features of meristematic tissues right so first feature is the cells are rapidly dividing like uh, as you have seen in the previous slide right the apical meristem they are responsible for the growth of plants so there the cell division is happening so cells are rapidly dividing in meristematic tissues second point they have a dense cytoplasm third presence of nuclei as i have mentioned earlier that they are eukaryotes right so it presence of nuclei then next point is they have a thin cell wall the cells cell wall is thin then they lack vacuoles so these are some of the important features of meristematic tissues now why do meristematic tissues lack vacuoles as you already know that meristems are actively dividing cells or they are growing uh, young cells so they do not participate actively in food preparation that's why they do not produce large amount of waste that and hence they lack vacuoles try these questions what would happen if the meristem ceases to divide then there is a uh, figure observe the figure and answer the following questions what does the figure shows you need to uh, comment in the comment section what does the figure shows label a b and c then write the function of a and c which part is responsible for increase in growth of internode so try these questions and uh, write in the comment section permanent tissues we will look in the upcoming video so if you understood this video please like share and subscribe thank you for watching